Hi there. I'm so happy to share with you today this block of Los Feliz Heights because it has three of our most famous pieces of architecture. Um, the first is the Skolnick House, and then the Ennis House, and then the Lafricorcier Hall. And um, these are three icons, 1951, 1924, and 1924, that were built up here um, by uh, notable architects. And of course, everybody knows about Frank Lloyd Wright, um, but these are our treasures here in Los Angeles. And so let's take a look. Okay, so this is the Ennis house. And if you keep going, it overlooks the 2475 Glendower Place where the murder happened in 1959. So odd. All this hasn't been redeveloped already. This is somebody else's house. Ennis looks straight over the back of this house. You cannot really catch a full glimpse. But that's the infamous Glendower Place home. Ooh. And we know it because they put the barbed wire up here. And you can kind of see down there from here. That would be a gorgeous property. I guess at one time it had this back stairs and now it's locked. Locked off to the public. So that would have been the back entrance. Ooh, and this is a beautiful view that the Ennis house must have from there. So they look right over. The 2475. I keep going. Whew. These are beautiful properties. They have a lot of nice square footage. Just the lots. Even though they were like three bedrooms, some of them. A lot of them. And this is really not that far. The 2600 to the 2500 block. It's right there. And then you see the Laffer Corsier Hall. Next on our historic route. It's only a second away. And the side of Laffer Corsier is at the back of we'll say 2475 Glendower. It's so whimsical and cute. Destination is on the left. Yeah. So this is the famous Los Feliz murder mansion. And um, it has been empty pretty much since the murder in 1959. So this is a 1925 home and it was uh, the architect was Harry Warner, and it was commissioned by the Schumachers, Florence and Harry Schumacher. Um, 
within three years of them taking the property or having it built, it was um, 1928 when they passed away. Eventually the home went to the Pearlsons, Dr. Harold Pearlson and Lillian Pearlson. And it has had quite the reputation. In 1959, on December 6th, Dr. Harold Pearlson murdered his wife with a ball-peen hammer and then committed suicide. His children, um, eventually the, they had the estate sold and um, it went to the Enriquez family. And unfortunately, it remained unoccupied for approximately 60 years. Uh, Rudy Enriquez had the money to leave the home vacant and just didn't occupy it. And then eventually it went to Lisa Bloom in 2016 and in 2020 it changed hands again. And uh, it's a property that's yet to be developed and it has an infamous reputation. The amazing thing about this space is that inside it has over 9,000 square feet of space. And the lot is actually 26,000, about 26,000 square feet. And there's just so much that could be done with it. Um, obviously, the hill has to be somewhat leveled in order to meet codes, uh, according to an interview that Lisa Bloom did a while back. So there's just so much that can be done. There's a pool area. It reaches all the way back and um, the Ennis house overlooks it from the back and to the side is the Laffer Corsier home. So it's right in this little triangle of very famous homes and famous architecture. And as you can see right now, it's for sale up again. It's come up within the last few weeks and has some lovely plans which uh, famous architect Richard Landry has made for the home. And as you can see, it could be a very luxurious place to live. It's just looking for the right owner. So if you know anybody who's looking, please contact me because I'm your local resource here in Los Feliz. And we'd love to introduce you to this property because it is such a treasure. Oh, and by the way, the agent who has this right now is uh, the Grum Grumman Rosenfeld Group. Adam um, Roosevelt and John Grumman. So uh, we would be buyer's side only for this transaction. But if you're looking for anything luxury that's already developed or something to develop here in Los Feliz, I can completely help you with that. All right, take care. That. So just a few bonus clips here for you of uh, photos and a tidbit of more information. Uh, so I think that what we haven't discussed is the curses <laughs> that they think that um, are on this home. Uh, yes, it could have been integration issues. Certainly Rudy's family, um, they came to the United States from Mexico, Emilia and Julian Enriquez, achieving their American dream, not only having brought wealth with them, but earning more money and, and providing this beautiful home to their son, Rudy. Um, you know, that's quite an achievement, but it, whether it was because of integration issues or because there was a curse, it's not really known why Rudy wouldn't occupy the home, but certainly there was somewhat of a series of tragedies as, as far as the house was concerned. Yes, Harry Schumacher and his wife Florence, they died within three years of building the place. Um, Florence died in July of 1928 of heart disease and her husband died of pneumonia in the same month, within uh, a month of one another. Um, and then, of course, there were some famous people who lived there. Uh, Fred Zelnick, the sound film pioneer, lived there. Um, and then there was a tragedy. In the meantime, young Donald Beaton died at 21. Uh, it seems like it was from an infection of some sort. And then George Arliss, the Academy Award-winning British actor, moved in for a period of time as well. And then it was happily occupied by the Stauffer family of Stauffer Chemicals for over 30 years. And then it went to the Pearlson family. So, um, you know, deaths in homes were common, um, you know, in the 20s and the 30s and births were as well. People were born at home a lot of the time. And so a lot of this, I don't know, but it's up to you.
this facade, you know, the strange staircase in the middle of the front window, the, the front window looking kind of ominous, like some people say it looks like an eyeball. Well, all sorts of speculation arose and um, people just tend to get afraid of, of the house at night. They like to come up there and, you know, trespassing has been a problem over the years. I just want to point out like here you can see that somebody <laughs> had thrown a, a, a spooky little doll on top of the garage just for effect. So people really have fun trespassing or going up to see the home and it is one of the sites in the neighborhood and it, it probably won't be eventually it'll get developed and gated off and, and that will be the end of it. But anyways, I just want to add in these last pictures and let you take a look at them. All right. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm here for all your real estate needs. My information is in the description. Take care.